counselor, you're not just your own employee, you're also your own boss. Today I'll be speaking to Joe Dagnes and Denise Kiernan about how to manage your money as a freelancer. Thanks for being here today, Joseph and Denise. Hi. Hi, how are you? Great, thank you. Okay, can you start by telling us a little bit about your backgrounds, each of you? You want to go first? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> ladies first. I, um, uh, we've actually both started out in journalism in the New York metropolitan area and have been writing for, well, writing, for, I mean, freelance for about 15, 17, I, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> it's, been long, it's been a long time. But we both, we both started out in journalism, newspapers and magazines, and then moved a little bit. We've moved more into books now for the last, I don't know, last maybe five or, yeah. five or so years, five or ten years. And I, I'm pretty much the same way as her. I'm, I'm a newspaper, magazine journalist and who gravitated into uh, writing uh, books pretty much. You talk a lot about organizing yourself in the book. So what kind of tips could you suggest for freelancers to help organize themselves in case of unforeseen costs or um, if a client doesn't pay them or anything like that happens? The, 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 the most important thing is that it gets started almost immediately when you go freelance. You need to be able to set up a organization or a, um, a flow for your income, a cash flow system that works for you. And what we suggest is that when a check comes in the door, you're setting aside a certain percentages, one for, say, um, your, uh, your health plan if, you, if you're required to, to, to pay into a health plan, uh, one for your retirement if, you're, if you don't have any retirement um, income set aside. Uh, you have, may have a... And a one for emergencies. One for emergencies. That emergency account, which most financial planners recommend uh, for anyone who has sort of a nine-to-five job, becomes doubly important for a self, uh, self-employed person because that uh, emergency fund will allow you to dip in uh, from time to time as, uh, you, as necessary when other checks that you're expecting don't come in the door. And, and people who have used this system tell us that very, very quickly they see that they're able to sock away money um, in a way that they didn't, didn't, weren't able to do before because they didn't have uh, specific goals set aside for that money. They were just sort of saying, okay, I have one checking account and I'm taking all my money out of the same checking account and whatever's left over is my savings, right? No, we're recommending as many as three or four uh, checking accounts to send your money to. And because it cuts, gets out of that um, checking account and into a savings account, you don't touch it, you can't see it, you don't interact with it, you can't access it with an ATM. Uh, it just, it builds up a lot quicker. Often asked in interviews, employers want to know how much you want to be paid or how much you're expecting. So how do freelancers know how much they're worth? Are rate cards something that you suggest or what, what is your take on this? I think there are a couple things that uh, people just starting out should take into account. Now, if you've been perhaps, for example, if you have been an editor at a magazine, if we're going to use writing as, as, as an example, if you've been an editor at a glossy magazine and you have been assigning stories and editing those stories, you know what those people are getting paid. So, you know, one thing you want to do as a writer is just take a second and gather any information you've ever gotten about what people get paid for certain kinds of work. In your profession. In your profession. Now, that also needs, you need to take into account where do you live. I mean, because obviously there are some towns and cities that the more expensive the city, usually the higher the rates are for particular professions. Um, and then just, you know, make sure, and then, oh, and then the third, I would say the third little wrinkle is, Take into account, don't sell yourself short, but if you've never, if you've never been published before and you're just starting out, asking for the same rate that a, you know, a writer of 20 years gets at a glossy magazine in New York City might not be the best way to kind of get in the door. Um, so it, a lot of it becomes a balance, but one of the things that I've found in not just in writing, but in many professions is 
there's this real reluctance to ask others for their advice and their opinion. And, you know, for someone just starting out, if we're still talking about writing, just starting out to, you know, take somebody they know, you know, a local, you know, writer or somebody else they know working that prep in that uh, profession, take them out to lunch, ask them a few questions. Most people are, I mean, happier, more, you know, they remember what it was like when they were starting out. They're totally happy to give advice. And that can be a really good way to get a feel for what the rates are in your particular uh, profession. Rate cards, some people, uh, some people like them. Whether or not you use a rate card, I, I guess what I would say is when you begin working for someone, have something on paper somewhere that talks about exactly what you're going to do for whatever money has been negotiated. Um, uh, one other thing I would add is that um, we know from experience and from talking to other freelancers that clients in general um, are wary of being charged by by the hour. They're afraid of it because they think that you know that the clock is just going to be ticking and they're going to be owing you uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars more than they ever expected uh, to have to pay you. So what you want to try to do is figure out, give your best guess for what it's going to take to perform the work that you're being asked to perform, and then quote a rate that is a flat rate with a clause in your contract that says that if the scope of work changes that you're going to renegotiate that contract. But having said that, I just want to point out that there are many, many freelancers today who are, don't even have the opportunity to say these are my rates because they are being presented with work and the client is basically saying this is what we're paying. It's sort of a take it or take leave it, or it, leave it. Yeah. situation. And that's a, it's a difficult situation to be in because you really have no uh, wiggle room and you have to try to figure out do I know this client well enough to start negotiating uh, more comfortable rates for myself? So lastly, I'm just going to read one of my favorite parts of the book. You say, right about now, you may be asking yourself, what comes first? Should I pay off my debt or save for taxes, retirement, and emergencies? And the answer is yes. Yeah. The, 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 painful, the painful truth about a self-employed uh, business is that you almost, it, it's like you're constantly playing a game of whack-a-mole. You always have all these little things that need to be taken care of, and they all need to be taken care of now. Uh, and that is true of crises that pop up during your workday, and it is also true of the little financial things that need to be taken care of. You don't want to wait, you know, 30 years to find out that you should probably be saving for uh, retirement. You don't want to wait 25 years to, to pay off your credit card. You don't want to wait, you know, three years to find out that you haven't been paying taxes. Everything, it, it, when it comes to your financial life, you have to develop a plan and you have to attack all those things a little bit at a time at the same time. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Denise and Joe. Thanks, Alex. Thanks for having us. For more tips from Joe and Denise about how to manage your money as a freelancer, go to cadella.com.